I see it fighting you. No can do. Mm. <laughs> I, I was watching you <laughs> in the butt cam when you can't turn. <laughs> so. Yeah, just hang on. We're okay. I just have to keep backing up until we can flip around. All right. You want to come try and get lower to you, maybe? Well, you're already 10. Like yeah, yeah, I was just saying, I, get, I could come. We're all right. It's just going to take some time. All right. Why don't you come down a little bit? Okay. Maybe we can get flipped around here and then. And no, we can't look at the coral. <laughs> <laughs> come on, come on, come on, come on. We're going to make it. Oh. Yeah. All right. I'm at eight. <laughs> Let's try it. Ah, it's losing it. It's losing it. There you go. There you go. <laughs> All right. Got it. Cool. You want me to flip now, or you want me to just leave you alone for right now? Uh, let me get a little closer. Okay. You, you didn't have to come up anyway. No.
So what heading are we going to try and do? Um, it's just looking where the next waypoint's at. Oh, it's not where I thought it would be. So we're going to be going about 260. Yeah, that might be, might be an issue. Okay. Is the current going to be working against us on that heading? Yeah, it might yeah. be like kind of okay. coming at us too broadside. Okay. Um, it's going to want to sweep us north. But I don't know. All right. Um, if, if that's going to be um, more well, than we can handle, uh, we, we can always bypass uh, Waypoint 2 and uh, head up bridge if there's a, the better an easier vector to uh, navigate. I mean, it looks like we could kind of just shoot up at like 290, 300, and then cut over to waypoint two, which wouldn't put us at this angle if we went directly there. Yeah, let me, let me try and figure out the current. Here. Okay. I think it's coming down slope, so okay. maybe we're okay. Yeah, it's not a well-defined ridge structure, so um, we have a lot of uh, degrees of freedom in uh, the dive plan. Jack, can you turn the down light on? Yeah. There you go. Okay, we're gonna go dark first. We're good, thank you much. All right. Awesome.
All right, does it sound good if I send us 50 meters in that bearing to see how it goes? Yep. All right. I think we're okay. Sounds good to me. Can we please move five zero meters at bearing two six zero? Thank you. All right, so we are on bottom at uh, our first waypoint and uh, starting our uh, slow trek uphill, seeing what we can see here. Um, current's going to be a little a bit of an issue uh, here and there, so we're going to um, make any adjustments uh, as needed. This is also a pretty shallow uh, uh, ridge, uh, not very well defined, that we're uh, traveling up, so uh, uh, today's dive plan uh, has a, has a fair amount of leeway in it, so um, we can uh, we can respond uh, with deviating off of that uh, planned track as necessary uh, in order to uh, uh, keep things moving. It looks kind of green. Yeah. yeah, a little bit. Yeah. How how are we do like? Would we be able to take a look at some of these corals or that? Um, yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. So. What do you want to look at? Just Great. Um, the one in front of us kind of looks a little raggedy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe it just had a really busy day too. Yeah. We could take a look at it though if if it's a good spot. But there might be others too. Yeah, it looks like there's there's a pretty good distribution of some of these around here. Assuming they're the same species. Yeah. So yeah, we'll uh. Nice, Take a look at this and nice some others. Bamboo. Uh, yeah, it is a bamboo. Doesn't look that raggedy when you look at close. It's a very delicate pink color. It is very delicate. It's got that. It's got that trident branching from the bottom again. Nah, it's slightly different, but that's okay. cool. Mm -hmm. And... Does it look like it's branching from the node? I think it looks like it's branching from like right here. And the node's right yep. there too. Zoom. Yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah, it's a little hard to tell where it's branching from. Yeah. Could you pan up a little bit? Maybe there's a branch. Oh no, they don't branch. Yeah, maybe we can look at another one, see if that'll that'll yeah. help. And assuming it's the same. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see, because we're seeing uh, nodal and non-nodal branchers in the same area yes, on the last today, dive. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mm Val, is this just a lot of sediment that we're seeing that's creating that... Uh, that greenish color? Yeah, that greenish color. Yeah, that's uh, a little bit more sediment cover than we've been seeing uh, for the most part on uh, some previous dives. Especially at this depth. Yeah. I guess that, uh, you know, that shallower slope. It uh, could could well be allows yeah. for a little bit more sedimentation. Yeah. Um, though. I maybe try a little white bit of balancing again. If it's yeah, I good. think it might be wrong because it seems really green. Okay, all my things right. look right. Yeah. Yep. Stand by. We're gonna make a couple of adjustments to uh, color balance.
too close. We need to get more out here. Can we kill all the lasers? Yeah. Dark again. I mean, the white looks white to me. The white looks white. Maybe the environment the just... looks green. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, it looks a little less green in the foreground. Yeah. yeah. And I think just Atlanta Cam is like so blue in comparison. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think that looks okay. Ship it. <laughs> Thanks for round two. <laughs> Is that a dead Walteria? That's what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. So that would be a sponge that's got the, uh, that is sedimented over or has um, accumulated um, sediment on it and it is probably dead. Yeah, it's not looking very lively. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're starting, oh, uh, a little bit more than halfway up this uh, this seamount, um, kind of base to summit. Uh, yeah, we're a little bit above the halfway mark on this, so um, yeah, it is a little interesting to see um, this much sediment uh, on the slope at this point. You might expect a little bit more toward uh, uh, the base of the seamount and then uh, perhaps summit top, but um, with a different morphology of the seamount, I think uh, I think Dan, you're uh, yeah, that'd be great. You're, you're right about why we might be seeing more here. Doesn't happen often, everybody, but it does happen <laughs> sometimes. I might yeah. be right. More than you think. <laughs> Another beautiful bamboo. Yeah, and I'm thinking it's internodal. Mm. I'm not seeing a node here where it branches. Right, I'm not seeing that um, either. Uh, I think the other polyps are covered, or the other yeah. branching is yeah, covered. I think you're seeing a node here and here, right? right? Yeah. Yep. Okay, yeah, I'd agree with your... Yeah, great. Of course, I'm not the expert here. <laughs> you are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but bamboo corals uh, require require more finesse <laughs> that is yeah does the shape of mm -hmm. this uh, yes. conical yeah. seamount dr val does does that make determination on where to collect rock samples easier more difficult is it the same are you still looking for basically the same kind of rock or do we have to take oh. kind of shape and and topography into consideration basically the same kind of rocks um, doesn't really change my plans a whole lot um, it's just we're what we're less sure about is um, 
the distribution of the biological communities we expect to see on the mm. seamount. Mm. We, we honestly don't know. So we're, we're trying to target uh, ridges where we're likely to see um, those uh, 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 denser uh, uh, colonies. But um, yeah, uh, you know, this, this could be a little bit different too. And there weren't really any uh, any any of the really strongly defined uh, rift zones or ridges like uh, like what we've uh, seen on previous dives on this one. So yeah, um, yeah we we found a couple of candidates uh, for uh, some of the better defined ridges and uh, um, selected from there. Great. We yeah. ha we have been able to see on some of the other evidence of of some of the volcanic plumbing. Um, is that more likely to be kind of buried deep within this conical uh, shape of a seamount? Uh, less likely to sort of encounter? Probably, okay. yeah. Okay. I mean, we could be surprised by that, but um, yeah, I, I'm, I would not be, uh, I, I would not necessarily expect uh, to see more of that interior structure on this. So we'll probably see a lot of lava flows, a lot of, a lot of rubble kind of like this. Mm -hmm. So we'll probably see sheet flows, lobate flows, pillow yeah. flows. And uh, with some of the really localized like meter scale bathymetry that uh, those will generate, we'll probably see a, a strong dependence of, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, coral and sponge growth uh, related to those. Makes sense. And here with it being maybe a little more rubbly, um, even though it looks like we've got pretty well developed uh, manganese crusts here that are kind of sticking a lot of these rocks to the seafloor um, to make them really hard to sample. Uh, yeah, this, this we may not see a ton. That's yeah. excellent. Wow, this is a beautiful view of the polyps too. And it does look internodal. This looks like a slightly different color bamboo than what we've uh, seen on the previous dive. Oh, does it? I, uh, Maybe a little more delicate. It looks pretty similar to me, but I might okay. also just be generalizing because to me, bamboos are usually sort of that creamy white with okay. the, the reddish pink in the center. Um, that's awesome. Thank Great. you so much for that. There's a sea cucumber, mm -hmm. what I believe to be a sea cucumber. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I think it is. And it, well, I will, zoom in. it's okay. clear. That's, that's always a good sign. Uh, yep. Prematurely say synectillin. You know, the, the issue with that is you gotta make sure it doesn't have legs. Yeah, oh. What are, what are these, uh, these, these uh, white nodal looking things? Oh, there, there are some that side. have, um, that have like papillae and such on okay. them. Okay. Yeah. It could still be. It's got. Um. It does look sort of like it's got extra. Um, papillae or feet on the bottom, but it's hard to tell at this angle. Um, and maybe. A, a, a narrower head. It um. It doesn't seem to. Yeah. Interesting. I think it could be. Um, I mean, it's definitely a sea cucumber. That's a that's a good solid check there. Nice. Um, cool. Yeah. And um, yeah, I'm thinking Cinelactida. Cool. Which and is what you said, isn't it? Kukui. Well Bomb done. Nailed it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. And all sea cucumbers are holothurians. Correct. Okay. Yes. Yes. Nice. Sounds like someone battling Mandalorian, but kind of, yeah. Mandalorians. Okay. I was thinking it sounded like it could be a very good alien name, you know. Oh. It, it just sounds like so otherworldly in some ways. Yes. Yeah, they, they look that way too. 
I'm looking at the substrate here and these manganese crust and I'm thinking, man, this is going to be, this is going to make for some challenging sampling for uh, rocks on this dive. It's definitely yeah. got that frosting kind of a feel to it yeah, that you've it talked about before. They're looking a little glued down today, so we'll, we'll make do. So, yeah, as far as I'm concerned, geological sampling is just going to be opportunistic. <laughs> And it's also sedimented, so this is one of these tricky situations where it may y you may come across an area where it, it looks like there's some loose rocks, but uh, under that sediment, they may actually be pretty firmly stuck. So this is a uh, in the past and involved use of a technique that the uh, the pilots and I would call poking the ground. <laughs> ah, yes, that's always good. The Met Gala. Yeah, we, we we try to minimize how much the you know how much the area we disturb, but sometimes you you kind of have to uh, tap a couple of the rocks here and there in order to find one that uh, isn't uh, stuck. Oh, no, you had a gorgia in that silk mm -hmm. Yeah, this is kind of to me at least from the watches we've been on feels like quite a different. Uh, a different feel. It is, yeah. Yeah, more sediment, lower, lower biological density. Probably in part because of the sediment. Yeah, and the. I mean, have have are we still? We're not still in that high current area, are we? We've moved uh -oh. moved out of it. Yeah. Yeah. So that makes sense. I mean, all these all these organisms here need really need the currents mm -hmm. to thrive. Um, yeah, not as many places that are kind of like sticking, like jutting out into the water column, mm -hmm. where we typically mm -hmm. see some of those really densely colonized boulders and stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting, the, the last couple of dives have reminded me a little bit more of the, um, above the surface of the Oahu landscape and, and the volcano ridges, kind of sharp ridges and walls, and then these remind me a little bit more of what we see above ground on Mokulkeave and Maui. Mm -hmm. Um, a little bit more and, and even the terrain um, mm -hmm. you know kind of feel like I'm going on a hike up Mauna Loa mm -hmm. um, or Mauna yeah. Kea now. yeah it is kind of reminiscent of being up on Mauna Loa Pohaku poi poi ame one nui Pohaku poi poi yeah. Yeah. I think so, yeah. That sounds it's like right. Round, round rocks. Mm -hmm. Hawaiian word of the day. Yeah. Or Hawaiian words of the day. <laughs> poi poi. Yeah. Mahalo nui mahina. What was the other one? We're, uh, there was another, it was from another conversation earlier when we first started our blue water dive. I have to think Ooh. about it. So it was one of our viewers we were talking. There was about. a great question about paakai. Paakai. Okay. Maybe not it. Let's see. Before the halo line. <laughs> Homework. I think. Let me see. I, it wasn't something specific that they asked, but it just kind of uh, correlated with the current conversation. Ah, oh, shucks. Totally slipped my mind. Um, if I remember, I'll bring it up. Okay. Kalamai, sorry. And see here we've got a little bit, uh, a little bit of a change in the topography, a little bit higher, higher section, and uh, a, a few couple more, more corals, a couple yeah. more of those bamboos. Yeah, um, for sure. Yeah. Another, uh, another dead wall, Tyria sponge. Yeah, the sponges don't seem too lively. We're, I think we saw a couple earlier on. Uh, uh, different species, though. Yeah, I think the first one we saw might have been a stock to put tell it a uh, Okay. Oh, nice. With that, yeah. That whole oh, yeah, unit. yeah. Yeah. The unit mm -hmm. of a sponge. Oh, uh, I think we found a traveler. Oh. Oh, is that one of your um. Pumice. What was it? Pum yeah, yes. pumice. I think it is, yeah. Wow. 
You want to elaborate on that for anyone listening? <laughs> sure. Um, yeah, so uh, we, we see a few of these uh, pumices uh, show up on uh, the slopes of some of the seamounts around here. Uh, they're, they're pretty easy to pick out because they, um, they're very rounded. They're very light in color. They're sort of a sort of a pale yellow or tan, very porous. Um, they're not coated with ferromanganese, um, and they don't belong to these volcanoes. They're not a product of these volcanoes. Uh, instead, they're probably much younger, um, well, certainly much younger, and they um, are more, most likely produced as part of a uh, 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 an eruption up in uh, one of the volcanic arcs to the north of us, maybe the Aleutians, maybe the Marianas, a little bit to the west. And uh, these these eruptions at some of these uh, arc volcanoes can form uh, pumice rafts that can sometimes uh, float around on the ocean for months at a time. And the current uh, apparently took a pumice raft, or mo or more than one pumice raft, through this part of the Pacific. And at this point, the pumices have been you know floating around for a while. They're getting jostled and very rounded as they kind of bump up and erode against each other. And they get waterlogged, and they eventually sink down and they settle on the seamounts in this area. So, yeah, we're, we're, seeing, uh, we're, we're seeing a little bit of a story from some other volcano very, very far away. I love the, love the little voyagers, uh, but not that useful uh, for our purposes. But right, Still yeah. awesome. It, it's, it's a little hard to glean uh, the same kind oh. of uh, information from the isotopic signatures of arc, arc volcanoes compared to uh, um, these uh, presumed intraplate volcanoes that we're looking at here. Are we so, still moving? That's right. not always, not always the most useful sample for us, regrettably. But I can tell a little story about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, everyone, the time has come. Uh, don't be too sad. The amazing 12 to 4 watches here, but uh, that means, well, you know what that means. <laughs> it's time for bed. I'm going to be sad. To this was a fun watch. It yeah. was a lot of fun, you all. Yeah. Love the 8 to 12s. <laughs> You're all amazing. Mahalo nui. Mahalo. Ahui ho. Mahalo, miki aloha. Ahui ho. Oh, I love you all. Ahui ho, akuno. Good night, folks. We'll see you at uh, 8 a.m. Honolulu time.
Looks like you better come up on Atalanta before you smash into that wall. Sorry, I, I lost the plot there. What What's our situation? Yeah. seem to be uh, side hilling on this and I'm on the deeper side of Atalanta so I'm gonna turn and burn and go up the hill I go in the wrong way I'm almost going south I need to go north are all good. Uh, they have a dive log going there, Jacob. What's that? Did they do a on bottom gauge reading? Yeah. What what time did they do that? Twelve forty. Roger, Roger. Turn, turn to the right for me. Look up the hill. Got you. All right, I think we're all set back here and standing by, front row. Heard it. wonder if any of these rocks are s suitable. Yeah, I talked with Val. They didn't get a sample yet. Everything's looked pretty welded down. So if we say something that looks like it's loose and the right size and the right shape, we're... Like that one there. I like it. How about that one, or that one, or that uh, one? I like the first one more. <laughs> uh, I don't know what will be loose. I don't know if it's Jeez. loose. Uh, yeah. Mia needs a, oh, they're loose, all right. Oh. Mia needs a minute here to do some uh, navigation Roger. magic. So it'll be a good time to poke around in the rocks. Welcome what, to the middle what's watch. Happening here? Stuff is we got a lot of bolts coming loose on this ROV. Seems to be a theme. Worse than my darn tractors, eh? Yeah, always coming apart. It basically is a tractor. It's just got thrusters instead of tires. My tractor has better cameras though. I don't 
don't think so. There's like 200 automobiles on there. All right. How many lumens? Each one of Herc's lights are uh, 10,000. Or 1,000 watts. 10 light bulbs. No comms. What the heck? What the? What the Sam Hill? Robert turns it off all the time. Ten meg. That's just awesome. No ground faults here. Oh, 570 amp crafts on got comes. <laughs> get someone to fix that. This one, Whoosh. it's a big grapefruit. Roger. What is the speed of sound tonight? 1,700 and some odd. I can tell you, actually. I have the technology. Yeah. The velocity is 1,496 decimal 940 meters per second. Super fast. That's a good size. Yeah. It's got some crusty stuff, some uh, faces, some facets. I think Val can get that on a rock saw. Uh, uh, it's a good size. I think she's going to have to hammer on it for a while yeah. first. Yep. Uh, I think it's too big. I can get a smaller one. Uh, personally, I would say that's not grapefruit size, but um, I think it's okay if, the, if nothing else seems loose. What is grapefruit size? That's... Uh, so yeah, that's uh, four, eight, maybe nine or ten inches across there. Oh, okay, maybe it just looks bigger than, I don't know. Even though the lasers are on it, it still looks like it might be. We had a hard time with a uh, larger rock yesterday, but yeah, uh, we'll go ahead and take this getting one. Getting it out of the box or sawing it? Um, we can put it in. Uh, we have all the boxes are empty so you can put it anywhere no, I mean you had a hard time getting it out of the box oh yeah we couldn't get out of starboard box a so yeah, maybe because Robert freaking jackhammered <laughs> it in there yeah he loves to do that okay open the box please box is opening slowly looks like really slow very like you're uh, oh like you're pushing opening the long box but Oopsie. Another button. That button seems to be working. Touchdown. And that was sample number zero six eight. Thank you, Taylor, again. No problem. Sample tree in. Very good.
I'll let you pick up that rock. Oof. Mm. So uphill <laughs> appears to be to the north. Uh, front row, if you're good with operations and um, samples are good, uh, is it all right if we go ahead and complete our watch change with a, a short round of introductions um, so our viewers can get to know the Midnight or Dead Man's Watch? Sure. All right, great. Um, thank you, everyone, for tuning in um, on this uh Another dive on an unnamed sea mount as part of the Ala Almoana Kayuli expedition in Papahanaumo Kuakea Marine National Monument. Um, we are still in this northwestern corner and planning to collect some rock samples um, to better understand the origin of this area as well as biological samples if they um, are something that are on our priority list. Read my mind, dude. So um, we'll go ahead and do a, uh, some introductions so you can get to know um, our amazing team on this watch. My name is Kara. I'm the science communication fellow for this watch. And uh, my job here really is to help share some of the research going on to all sorts of different audiences from um, kindergartners all the way to um, uh, our, our elders elderly folks <laughs> tuning in um, from um, all sorts of different communities. So um, thank you so much for joining uh, from all the different locations you are around the world, um, Australia, Japan, Italy, UK, France, the Netherlands, Germany, Canada, Philippines, Norway, Ireland, Hungary, Guam, Czech Republic, and Switzerland. We really appreciate um, you exploring with us. Um, I'll go ahead and pass uh, my uh, introductions to my right. Hans, would you like to uh, share? Can sure. I, can I, uh, just, sorry, can I jump in for a second there? Yep. Uh, so we're, we're not moving the boat yet. We need to, I feel like we need to, you know, move the boat somewhere. And I don't know what the plan is. Yeah, Val uh, talked to me. There was some current. I guess you've heard the same thing. And um, she said since the topography of this sea mount is you know, not as ridgy, we have some freedom to move laterally to deal with the current and not worry about being too close to the track line. But um, you know, from here, we make our way towards waypoint two. But it might be up and over, as she said, to the right of waypoint two towards waypoint three. There's some flexibility given the current as well. So, waypoint two's to the, they're both to the west. Yep, and she said, if you don't, we don't get hit waypoint two exactly, that's fine. This area is a little more undifferentiated. Okay, it looks like we got some downhill, side hill misery in front of us. We might as well get that out of the way. Yeah, that's what it looks like that way. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you can you plug in a move. I'll deal with it. Sounds good. Blah blah. Yeah, that. I'll do that. Oh, I'm good with that. <laughs> You're good with it. We're good with, with it. <laughs> You're driving. No, I'm following. Uh, 290. 290 looks like. Is that uphill? You know, I always want to go uphill. But then we sometimes like pay for it later, you know? Yeah, 290 is good. I'm good. I'm down the 290. Roger. There are only eight waypoints, and this is a 24-hour dive, but... Um, I can't read those maps over there. I, if I follow, go uphill for a while, then where I get trouble is 
oh no, now we have to go downhill to get to the next waypoint. So, but as long as we can keep going uphill. Are you noticing the current? Negative. Roger. All right, thanks, Kara. My name is Hans. I'm an archaeologist and historian for NOAA's Office of National Marine Sanctuaries. I'm assisting the middle watch, or as we call it, the dead man's watch, midnight to 4 a.m. as watch lead, and I'm going to be operating the still cam. I'm going to push that button, and I'm going to push that button very judiciously tonight. <laughs> So I don't lean too heavily on those who edit those photos. <laughs> oh, uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon. Uh, I am Upashana Ganguly. I am a deep sea biologist from India, uh, currently studying uh, the evolution of a group of deep sea corals at the University of Louisiana at Lafayette. And it's a pleasure to serve as the biologist on the 12 to 4 watch. It has been a great experience so far and looking forward to having great dives with the team for the rest of the cruise. And with this, Taylor Ann. Hi, I'm Taylor Ann. I am the data logger on this watch. So I'll be logging all the observations that we see on this dive. And I'll pass it on up to Mia. Hi, I'm Mia. I'm serving as the navigator as this watch, and I'm happy to be here. <laughs> pa pass it on to Dan. <laughs> I'm Dan, sitting in the hurt chair, chief gopher and janitor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jacob, if you're... Hello. My name is Jacob Olsen, <laughs> I'm from Ever Beach, He's exit 76 point. South, and uh, I am a Megalab scientific diver and in the Atalanta chair, also part janitor. <laughs> <laughs> Aloha, my name is Jana Galvez, I am from Hilo, Hawaii, and I'm the video engineer on this watch. Thank you so much, front row, and we'll bring it back around to Elsie. Thanks, Kara and Ali, and good morning, evening, afternoon to all. My name is Elsa Delay, and I am a supporting scientist here on this watch and here on the Nautilus. While on land, uh, I live in a small island in the Western Pacific called Palau, and I work as a researcher at the Palau International Coral Reef Center, and excited for a great watch tonight. Thanks so much. Elsie. Or this morning. <laughs> yeah. I have no sense of time anymore. <laughs> um, if you'd like to learn more about any of the people you just heard about, feel free to check out nautiluslive.org, and all our profiles are there with information about um, our career journeys, advice for students, um, and lots more. So definitely um, check that out if you'd like to um, get to know the Dead Man's Watch. <laughs> I think we can uh, bump up the speed a bit. Seems pretty benign here. Yep. Did you want a quick zoom on that? Yeah. Uh, I'll be in a position to have a have quick zooms. Well, yeah. Yeah. All right. If you circled something, I missed it. Oh, yeah. Thank you. That should be good. <laughs> Just <Thank> kidding. <laughs> A little more, right? Yeah. So since we uh, started the shift, we have been mostly seeing bamboo corals. Uh, for example, the ones in front would be the sparse branches. good? A little bit closer. Oh, a little closer. Uh, I have to come around. Okay. Yeah, so we have been seeing lots of, ba not lots, we have been seeing mostly bamboo corals. Uh, for example, the more pinker colonies in front, they look like what are being termed as the sparse branches, and my colleague Mary, she's working on those currently, but the one at the back, the more yellowish bush, they also look like uh, uh, bamboo corals and I wanted to have a closer look at them 
Uh, we also saw uh, mushroom coral and anthomastus, or pseudo anthomastus. Okay. Okay, there's something on the branch. Oh, there's a sea star in the background. No, it's not. It's something else. <laughs> Way to get my hopes up. Yeah, sorry. It looks like a gastropod, definitely. Uh, if, if Is that the full zoom? Yeah. And can't make out of it. These are nodal branches because I can see here that the branch is looks like that it's coming out from a node on the bamboo coral mm -hmm. uh, and the red looks like a gastropod of some kind that's feeding on the polyps because we see that the where it's uh, perched on the branch that it's missing the polyps so probably it's feeding on the polyps uh, yeah that's a, uh, yeah we can good. we can continue moving thank okay. you very cool. And for viewers who are not familiar with the term gastropod, um, those that refers to um, snails and um, a few other snail relatives, I guess. Does that include slugs too, right? Or yeah. 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 Slugs would be gastropods as well, I think. Or do you think um, it could be like a closed up anemone, is that? potential or did you see the shell like what helps you um, determine it's a gastropod mm. yeah. right. so for this one particularly it seemed that I could see the spiral of the shell mm. so that's what uh, told me that it's probably a gastropod uh, because that color we have seen in anemones as well, but uh, from the zoom and the view that we had, it looked like it had the typical gastropod right. spirals cool. uh, shell. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Slugs are the enemy of my garden. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> What are you trying to grow? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can grow. put it in a long move if you want. A number of things. Chilies, green peppers, yeah. oh, that's uh, nice. green onions, mm. basil. Oh. That's nice. Kale, mm. tomatoes. <laughs> no, I want to get Very more healthy. involved in gardening. Herbs. I try, but I'm not good at gardening. Also, I don't get like consistent time to take care of it. Mm. And you're a specialist on deep sea coral <laughs> gardens. <and then. laughs> no, I'm learning with gardening. I have some kale. I yeah. don't know, for some reason the kales grow and nothing else grow. So I don't know why the kales love the garden, but nothing mm. else really wants to survive there. Interesting. Um. Beets. Mm. That's a lot. Yeah, that is a yeah. lot of variety. <laughs> It sounds kind of like the menu we have on the Nautilus. <laughs> um, we had a question from a Japanese viewer. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure what time is it there. Is it, I was going to say Kombawa, but I don't know if it's, um, it's evening. Mm -hmm. um, but they were asking, um, where they can find the video from our exploration 
I'm looking at the uh, aircraft car Japanese aircraft carrier Akagi. Uh, so that footage was recently uploaded to our YouTube page. Um, so uh, if you check YouTube um, and type in EV Nautilus, that is our YouTube account, um, the latest video is um, an overview of uh, some of the footage and commentary um, from the uh, exploration of Akagi. So um, definitely check that out. Um, <laughs> and I um, apologize if this sounds terrible, but Akagi no video wa YouTube page ni arimasu. So um, thank you for your message and tuning in and um, we're glad we can provide you some updates from our previous dives. That's a very, very tall Iridogorgia. Yes, a very beautiful and very tall Iridogorgia. I think it is almost a meter and a half tall. I'm not good at guesstimating heights, but uh, that's what it looks like. I think this is a colony that also tells us why they are called the firework corals and the spiral is beautiful. In here, huh? It is. Uh, by any chance, are we seeing two sets of lasers? Yeah. Is it reflecting on something? I think you're having a coffee hot now. Perfect. Oh, I, un I understand what you're saying. It's glittering in the... That's wonderful. Can float up, see if we can get that in the DSC. And then we can spiral like that, so we're not looking down on it. Okay, off we go. Yeah, it's sixty six in here. Yeah within normal parameters. Do we have um, any but insight? If you're having a hot down, you can turn that blower up just a little bit there and then we'll blow more cool air on you. Do we have any insights on um, why they spiral? Is it, again, maybe just surface area? Probably. Filter feeding? Yeah, probably increasing the surface yeah, area, the but then also it's quite, a, uh, I would say, an outlier being taking up that spiral uh, structure of a colony. We don't see that often, but yeah. then in, in octocores, where we've seen spirals, especially like in the whole of mollusks, there's that concept mm. of spiraling, right. whether they have a shell or not. But uh, no, I don't think it's not known why they have this spiral, but as far as I am aware, they are the only octocorals that have this kind of a spiral morphology. And uh, uh, the Gorgias are a monophyletic group, so uh, it seems to have evolved once. So monophyletic group right. means that when we are looking at an evolutionary tree, that uh, what is 
classified taxonomically as a Ritogorgia. All of them have evolved once, and uh, so these spirals have evolved once in the evolutionary history of. Um, I mean, they, uh, yeah, the taxonomy of Ritogorgia is monophyletic, but at the same time, uh, we see that this morphology also evolved once in the history of octocora, octocorals and uh, not several times. We don't have several groups of corals which have independently evolved or uh, developed the, uh, this morphology. So it's interesting and again, one of those aspects that we have no idea about, but we can just see them and admire them and wonder. <laughs> yeah. Just stare like in amazement. Exactly, yeah. right. I was um, going through the still photos today and just every single one of them was like mind-blowing. Yeah. So. <laughs> They're always so photogenic. Yeah. Good job, Hans. <laughs> and Jaina. And Jaina. <laughs> of course. <laughs> it's all post-processing. <laughs> It's both. Yeah, I still have to go through the still images. I haven't had a chance to look at the still images, but that's on my long list of things that I have to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, things look pretty uniformly welded down by the by the crust. Yeah. Manganese crust, I guess. Once again, every seamount we've seen has got its own characteristics. It looks rather different again. At yeah, Hans, they posted a, bun posted a bunch of your still photos on the Instagram today. You should take a look. All of those coral photos yeah. are the ones you took. Oh, yeah. They posted a bunch. Oh, those looked really nice. Yeah, those Hans were gorgeous. took every single one of those. Oh, great, Hans. The editing was really great, too. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> Jaina's just too That's modest. Right. <laughs> so pretty, don't even need to edit it. <laughs> All I did was make them a little brighter. That's it. I have a question. If Dan positions the camera and Hans clicks, who's the photographer? Jaina. <laughs> it's, a, it's a team effort. Thanks, Hans. Thanks. Takes the village. <laughs> yeah. Awesome photos. I shared them definitely just because they were so, it's just like, as soon as you see them, you're like, wow. Yeah, it's breathtaking. Yeah, the colors were vibrant. Yeah, and it is also important to have such still images to inform sure. people so that they can, uh, because we can't, it's, um, yeah. Wait till you see the jumbo octopus photos Hans took. They're pretty epic. Really? Oh yeah, no, they're really good. epic. That's good. Yes. So what, I mean, it is important, these pictures, these photos, still images, and sharing them on social media is important because uh, that engages people and makes them interested. And then they can come and tune in because we can't expect people to sit and watch hours and hours of video, but once you once somebody gets excited and ex and interested in something, then they'll put in more time and effort in understanding these ecosystems. Yeah, and I think it offers a different point of view as well. Absolutely. Like the videos are so great for seeing behaviors, like their mm -hmm. movement patterns, um, um, when they like contract and <laughs> expand or open their polyps or whatever, but the still camera photos can be so like dramatic with the dark background and the lighting. So definitely really cool. Actually, actually Jacob, um, you're kind of the star in some of those photos because you can see um, Atalanta's lights in the background shining in. And it's just so like, I was screaming in the lab watching and <laughs> looking at those photos. <laughs> so um, really great job, um, everyone involved. As Dan says, it takes a village. Now I'm just going to take a ton of photos. Oh, yes. <laughs>
<laughs> I volunteered myself for that <laughs> and I was like, of course, Megan. She's like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. Are you sure you want to do this? And I was like, yeah, no problem. And I sit down and for just our last watch, there was like a thousand photos. <laughs> Tom Sawyer, you ran into that one. There. <laughs> so for every photo that Hans verbally says he takes, he takes like <laughs> probably 50 more. 50 more. <laughs> Which is good. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> it's funny because I can always tell... I mean, I know which ones Hans took because I was here, but all the other watches, there's like a little chunk and then like 90% is <laughs> the ones Hans took. Uh, can we have a look at this? And uh, this also. And I may put in a request to collect one of the sparse branches in a while. If you come up, you're going to pull me in. And also good images are important for ID. And uh, there's one part of informing people and reaching out to them and making them involved. But the, uh, on the scientific end also, it is very important having good images. And uh, Okay. Okay, yes. A bamboo coral, bushy bamboo coral with internodal branching. Is it internodal? Internodal? No, it's the not. The node on the very bottom corner seems to be, or the branch. Branch seems to be nodal, but here is some small. It's, it is nodal branching. Yeah, there and also here. It's Okay, it's different. The screen looks... The arrangement has changed. Yeah, uh, thank you so much. Thank you. I dropped something again. <coughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, uh, do you think we are in a position to collect a so snip of that? One, two, yeah, three, can. four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, please. Then that would be great. So, yes. No, this is not on our exactly the priority list. That's why I was about to give the little story behind these. So very recently from uh, previous image data and samples collected from uh, Nautilus and Okeanos, my colleague Mary Shi. So my advisor, Dr. Scott Franz, he works on bamboo corals. And they realized that there's this different morphology that they have been seeing in certain bamboo corals where the number of they ha and these were identified even if you look at the benthic animal guide as the sparse branches but there wasn't any work done on them uh, to know what was exactly happening with them are we are they just a morphotype of some of the other species that we have already described or are they new species so given her work she has realized that no these are a different species but there's o now this uh, there are certain colonies that look like the sparse branches but don't exactly fit that description okay, because they are up. trying to come up with exact morphological descriptions so this kind of fits the uh, region where they need samples to figure out whether these belong to the new species or they are not so they, there has been a request to collect a little bit of these samples okay so there's been a request and it's an underrepresented sample and yes. we can we can do it by just a portion of... Absolutely, a little okay. portion. A little portion, and we have been seeing these uh, f on this dive so far. Yeah, we've seen And a just a little portion, uh, maybe 10 centimeters is enough. Of the one we're looking at here? Yes, yep. so any one of the branches okay. from the top. Just for uh, future reference, we have a limited time when we stop, even though we stop the ship, Atlanta's swinging in, so... 
We've burned about half of that time we have. Atlanta's now above us. Right. Can you go wide, please? So, uh, yeah, if we stop to get a sample, it, you know, if we... We'll see this again, though, won't we? Yeah, I think so. Uh, yeah, if if we, I, I would... Yeah, if we burn too much time, we're going to come across this again. Uh, we're, we're pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, I would prefer to... Okay. If I have my druthers. Because so what will happen now, Atlanta's on top of us, right? So if we yeah. take the sample, then Atlanta will be on the other side of us, and we have to make yep. up all that time. We don't want that. That's the double tango. The double tango, yeah. So are we good to go forward? Yeah, you can get them moving again. need one of those little sand glass timers I set up there so when we stop. That's actually a really good idea. <laughs> I used to have a timer. Like when I first started, I would hit my timer button and I would time it how long it took Atalanta to catch up. But it yeah. changes all the time depending on our depth. Yeah, it's just really hard to conceptualize, you know. It's harder the deeper we are. Yeah. But it also depends wildly on the current and the terrain. And Maybe, sometimes yeah. we have... Well, as you've seen, sometimes we have, you know, 60, 80 meter layback. Right, right, right. Sometimes we have, uh, and then it takes, yeah, once we start and stop the ship, if we wait all that time for Atlanta to swing in, then we have to then move the ship, and it takes all that time for Atlanta to start moving again. If we keep the whole mess kind of moving, or... Uh, yeah, it's a complicated dance. No yeah, question. Yeah, yeah. Ballroom dancing is on my to-do list. <laughs> I'm not very good at it. I didn't say good ballroom <laughs> dancing was on my to-do list. And that's not true, Mia. You're doing great. Yeah, so if you feel me pressuring during sample taking, that's, that's why I'm trying yeah. to keep the whole mess rolling. I meant I'm not good at ballroom dancing. Oh, I thought you, I thought you, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm still learning this. So I'm not a pro either, but. I thought it was a metaphor. We thought you were doing good. I've been doing it for a while and I'm still learning. So don't, don't feel pressure to figure it all out in the first expedition. What's that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mia, were you involved in mapping this uh, this area? Oh yes. Yep, <laughs> yep, yep. Would you like to share any insights from the map about, you know, the kind of terrain we're going over? It's uh, it's gonna it's so. It's pretty steep in one way if we were headed directly to our waypoints. And um, so. I'm trying to get us to go a bit north away from the waypoint and then turn us around west to go more westerly, but um, yeah, where it was a... Uh, where are the visual aids? Uh, I know, visual aids. So. It's, um, I feel like this one compared to the others looks a bit more like uh, compact sea mounty from what I would think a sea mount of look to look like. Uh, we had some technical difficulties, so um, I didn't get to see all of it come in, but yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it does look kind of steep on this contour map. Yeah. Certainly less of the defined ridges than we've seen elsewhere. Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't sure what we'd see when I after seeing this, you know, because the other one of the other dives we saw it was kind of steep. Then we had all those pinnacles, and just because the resolution isn't, you know, it's like 75 meters or whatever, it's it's not super detailed. So 
it's always a surprise. Um, but yeah. I still think it's amazing you generate these images like on the spot, basically, oh, before well, the die. Rennie did that. So I went to bed and then Rennie did <laughs> Rennie Great job, Rennie. Rennie and Derek, Rennie and Derek, yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, no, they do a really good job. They they can turn around really fast. I was, uh, wasn't was sure if we'd, we'd be diving on time because we uh, had a lot of technical issues. We did not. Yeah. Can you share a little bit about uh, the technology? It was just a mapping glitch. It was just a glitch with the mapping system. Oh, okay. Yeah, no. It, uh, they had to reboot. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> every, yeah, every time Hard I. Reboot. Every time uh, I want. Yeah. Uh, Oriel, who's driving the shipper now, actually helped catch it one time. Because we we thought it started going again fine, and then um, it went out. And uh, I had showed him what the issue was, so he knew what it looked like. So he was able to call down and say, "Hey, check the screen again." So I think it's a really good example of working together and knowing what the different roles are and what to look out for to you know have each other's backs. Yeah, for sure. How many computers does it take to map with this boat? Like twenty? Oh yeah, there's so so many. We have like three dedicated stations, but then I'm you, I still have to constantly switch between different computers on those stations. So it's really hard to like when things are when we were when, when we're mapping over the sea mounts, it's difficult because we're trying we're getting the multi beam and then we're also getting the sonar data and um, that isn't it's very hard to get that to come in smoothly at this depth and when it changes radically with these seamounts. So we constantly have to babysit to just manually change uh, the range or the, the uh, phase, the depth. Dan came in and saw that the other day. Uh, so, you know, I'm looking at the quarter of my eye, seeing how deep we're going and then it ascends somewhat rapidly once we get over the seamount. Um, so there's a lot of, lot of things to monitor. I wish I had six eyes. <laughs> if any, of you, if any of you get bored when uh, we're we're just mapping, just come on down. Oh, help look at one of the screens. Yeah, yeah. and I'll teach you how to shoot an XPT as well. <laughs> Roger. Was this what you wanted to collect before? Uh, no, I just okay. want to have a look at this one because it's all, it all again looks like it has the red snail. So I just wanted to confirm it's the same kind and get good imagery of the gastropods that uh, somebody yeah. working on gastropods can help ID them. Okay. Pushing on the little orange thing there. But this one looks different. Looks like it's also removed the polyps. Yeah. But this one, I'm not sure what it is, given the... That fall, is it? Are you pausing there? Yeah, I am. Okay. Are you good? Mm -hmm. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. And um, earlier, Mia mentioned an XBT. So that stands for Expendable Bathy Thermograph. Um, and if I say anything wrong, Mia, please feel free to um, correct. Um, but basically, it's a small probe that's um, dropped from the lawn, from the side of the ship, and it, um, as it falls through the water, it measures things like temperature, um, and that's important because uh, things like temperature can actually play a role in the mapping operations. 
um, the it can affect the, s the speed of sound in water. Um, so that will affect uh, how long it takes uh, the pings from the sonar to return back to the sensors. Uh, so this helps make that, um, that sonar more accurate. Yeah, I think there's, there. I'm pretty sure there's a really good explanation online about it and photos as well. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a copper inside, there's this, it looks like a mini smushed torpedo, <laughs> 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 like uh, that's, uh, you know, metal and that has copper connected to it. And then there's also a copper spool inside. So when we launch the probe, the copper is, uh, you know, that conductive element that is connected to the ship to our system to get that information for the sound speed uh, and velocity profile um, which like you mentioned it helps make things more accurate yeah thanks for the elaboration yeah i think um, you can find more information on it um, at noah's ocean explorer page as well and I think there might be some Instagram, some uh, yeah. Tori, I think uh, yeah. <laughs> I taught her how to do it. I think you were there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so if people use Instagram, I think uh, you, you can get a visual there, what it looks like, if it's still up. I'm not very good with Instagram, so. If I remember in general, isn't sound transmitted four times faster than, than in air, in water, roughly? I'm not sure, Hans. I will look that up. Well, I know for divers, it's very yeah. difficult to tell where sound is coming from. Yeah, I mean... So when you hear that outboard motor, just keep your head down. Yeah, for sure. Or anytime someone, like, you know, bangs a lead weight on the side of the boat to notify everyone to come back, you can be pretty far away and still hear it. So it looks like so far we have been seeing at least uh, three different kinds of bamboo coral colonies. Uh, the more sparsely branching uh, bamboo corals, the internodal bamboo coral fans, and the nodal branching uh, bamboo corals, coral fans. Uh, so the last two would be, uh, yes, so yeah, that's what we have been seeing consistently with some iridogorgias, a few iridogorgias so far. So, uh, Upashana, we're almost done with the ship movement. Yeah. Um, do you think you're going to come across that coral that you wanted to sample? I, I haven't been looking. I, I don't know what it looks like, so... Uh. I mean, uh, we haven't seen it in the last couple of minutes, so. Well, I hope we do. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to ask if that was like the same one that. Uh, no, no, it wasn't. Okay, it wasn't. Okay. Yeah, if it is, like, I'll, I'll point it out. As like an opportunity. Yeah. No, if it is, I will definitely point it out. These were different. Uh, these were different bamboo corals. Um, I just looked it up on uh, a NOAA page, Noci uh, National Oceania Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration page, and they say sound moves faster in water at about 1,500 meters per second than in air, which, which is about 340 meters per second. So about 4.4 times faster. Yeah. Um, we had a question in the chat, Upashana, um, they were asking about spiral corals. Do they spiral all in the same direction? Um, are some spiraling counterclockwise and others clockwise? Have you noticed anything regarding as, that? Yeah, as far as I'm aware, the spiraling is in the same direction, but I also remember having an interesting discussion uh, about this, but I can check. I will check, but I think they mostly spiral in the same direction. Yeah, it's an interesting question. Mm -hmm. 
You know how, like, with molecules, the yeah. chira is it chirality? <laughs> it's been a while since chemistry. <laughs> but basically, if it's like the left-hand version versus the right-hand version yes, of a molecule, yes. it can drastically affect its um, properties yeah, and function, whether it functions or not, or its function. Depends on uh, what side of the equator you're on, doesn't it? Yes, uh, not for the corals, hopefully. But for several things, yes. Several important things. <laughs> so they're like at the yeah. Some of these um, nodal branching um, bamboo corals look like the genus Isadella, but it is quite difficult to ID them. Mm. We have good images, so that is good. Zoom in there for me real quick. Okay. Thank you. You're looking for nodules? And just documenting the right. possible. what it is, whatever it is. Yeah, we're seeing some interesting patterns on the seafloor, though. It reminds me of the cookies and cream ice cream we had for dinner. Or I guess after dinner, right? Not just <laughs> no, entirely I, for dinner. No, I just had it for dinner. <laughs> just one giant tub. Of and then I went to bed. Um, we also had another question for Pashana, if you're okay with that, if you're not too busy. Um, the question is, what is the skeleton of these corals made of? Yeah, it's mostly made up of calcium carbonate and uh, proteinaceous material. Uh, kind of, it depends from one group to another, the proportion of each material. There's also some, um, like the ratio of aragonite and calcite in the uh, skeletons can differ based on the groups, uh, and the molecular structures, mm -hmm. and the way the protein and the calcium molecules are arranged, they can differ, but it, these are some of the major components. Mm -hmm. They also have some magnesium as part of the, mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. It depends from group to group. That looks like a dead sponge. Seeing what was going out on the quad. Something feeding in the sediment there, making those tracks. The darker tracks. The the light tracks. The light tracks. Is Can that, be that kind of uh, yeah. a holothuria or something? Yeah, and every once in a while when I glance, there's like a, almost a perfect circle, mm. so. That's just a crop circle, it's the aliens. Yeah, crop circle, <laughs> I think so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
it's aliens. Because you can. Struggling on the side slope. That one looked really squiggly. The yeah. one we just passed. Yeah. Very different. It looks like something you expect at the base, but we're not at the base. We're already up on this seamount in some ways. Definitely seems like a lot more sediment, maybe, compared to our other um, dives recently. Yeah, this particular route, that's for sure. Up Please. the hill, yeah. Sediment cores may be collected opportunistically for macrofaunal and autolith analysis, or as requested by scientists ashore. This looks like it's a little rocky, but... Could probably take a push core here, though. We could try. It looks... I think we've seen areas with less rock. Yeah. Yeah, we can wait for an area with less uh, pebbles. But we just have yeah. not been able to get many sediment samples. No, yeah, so, so this would be a good opportunity if uh, the sediment is fairly thick underneath. We could try one here. You want? Uh, Shall we? we? Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, we can. All right. Sounds good, Dan. Right here. May want to uh, stop them up there. Stop. Hold the position, please. Oh, that looks nice. Is that a fish hanging out on the floor? Yeah, the there's a fish on the sea floor. We'll have to come up a bit there, mate. Yeah. So we're careful to not just randomly take things, but pay attention to the mission objectives and sample just what's needed. And we don't have, we have almost zero sediment samples so far, I think. So it's important for us to do this, but um, we're in a special place. And so we're very careful with what we remove from that place. Yeah, I'll have to come up a little bit more. It's gonna time here. <coughs> Want to change the camera over for me? Is that a tripod fish? It looked like it had longer... It, um, did yeah. it look like that? Yeah, yeah maybe because it, it was longer. resting on the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I wasn't sure from the angle, but the body shape 
seems like a tripod fish. you call that a sample? Um, seems like the top layer got a little disturbed, so maybe we should try again. Definitely got a little disturbed. Uh, we're out of time here. I'm going to have to move. Okay. If the fish we saw was a tripod fish, then it would be in the family Ipnopidae. And there's a nice mushroom coral on the rock. I guess some of these larger rocks are providing like kind of habitat for the corals as attachment spots right in this area so um, definitely um, just like surface could be a limitation on yeah. uh, coral habitat yeah. yes the surface the current bringing in the food come up a bit Have you been able to look at a sediment core sample before? Me? Yeah. Oh uh, no. I mean, I've I've seen them. Mm. Uh, I've proce helped process uh, others who work on sediment cores, but I have not personally worked on sediment cores. But I've helped process a lot of uh, sediment core samples. Oh, so you have been able to process them? Yeah, okay. I've processed them, like prepared them for the downstream analyses. Mm. Like once you pull them up on the board and. Right. Uh, like that. But so, what is that process like? Is it you have to like make sure it doesn't spill or special containers or? Yeah, it depends on the downstream uh, objectives. So, especially the kinds that I have been involved with, it was uh, me initially measuring the depth layers for each of the sediment layers that you could distinctly see, then uh, taking a portion of them and. Uh, we can take a quick quick break from yeah. chat while we um, let operations focus on sampling. Yeah, it's pulling me forward up the hill. There. Come on. Oh well. Wow. Yeah. I don't know. What? It's uh, more of an angle than it looks. Too 
Turn that down light on there. That'll stay in there. This looks like it's still in there. And that was sample number 069. Thanks, Taylor Ann. <sighs> Thanks, Dan. Yeah, I don't know if that's a legit core sample or not. It looked pretty good to me. I think all they need is the top five centimeters. So. Oh, yeah. Wow, well, yeah. Five centimeters is pretty small, but I guess I haven't actually seen the core in person, but it looked <laughs> Less <laughs> than a good. quarter of an inch. Yeah. That could happen. Um, so, Pashana, you were sharing before about yeah. um, how you've processed them? Yeah, so for those samples, I wanted to look at the... Maybe more than the top five centimeters, the different oh, okay. layers. So that then uh, going through, separating the layers and going through the biota or what is uh, what uh, what biota you can find in each of the layers. Then I also remember, mm, I forgot exact the protocol, but we had uh, tried and uh, there was something invo uh, involving uh, the okay. particular targeting the matter again. in each of the layers, so processing the samples and storing them for those uh, downstream analyses. Mm. So depends on what the purpose is and the objective is. Right. Yeah. Uh, 315 would oh. be great. Sure. Uh, just to confirm, Dan, was that the most aft uh, push core? Uh, most forward one. Or, yeah, I always get turned around with those ones. Thank you. Yeah, me too. Cucumber? Yes. Can zoom on the sea cucumber if you want. Yeah, it looks like another one of the cyanolacted sea cucumbers. That's nice. Is it okay, go ahead. moving or is yeah. it just the water like pushing it around? I think it's just the water and the mm. ROV. It's not actively walking. The moving. vehicle displaces mm -hmm. enough water to move them around, especially if they come in too fast. Something else in the is yeah. a big shrimp. It's a shrimp. It's 
one of those, um, wait, let me check the name. I think it's showing us the way to waypoint three. <laughs> Pretty big, no? Yeah. I appreciate like this a bit there. Oh! <laughs> so, so speedy. Yeah, it looks like oh. one of the Nematocar oh. sinus shrimps. <laughs> but there was something else that I was. There's something floating. Is that floating or is it attached to the. That's an umbilical. Can we have a quick zoom on it? Sure. No, so that it would is. be a mm -hmm. C pen. Okay, go ahead there. Oh, no, I thought it was. It's just floating. No, it's stuck. Oh, I see. Really yeah, yeah. One, two, stuff. three, four, five, six, seven, eight polyps. No, or am I one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine polyps? Okay. Yeah, so it's a it's a C pen, and um, this is a unique morphology that uh, we see in the C pens, but. Uh, this kind of morphology has not evolved once among the sea pens. Uh, we can continue moving. And right uh, we see the umbilical like uh, morphology in at least uh, three different clades. Wow, it looks so different from the other sea pen that we yes. found. That yeah. one actually looked like a pen with like, yeah, a, yeah. like a feather pen. This one almost looks like a like Very strange mushroom coral, but yeah. it's skinnier and it's on a stalk. <laughs> it's like it's a, like I feel strange. like uh, more like a flower on top of a stalk or more like mm -hmm. an umbrella, like inverted mm -hmm. umbrella. Mm -hmm. and Very cool. Mm -hmm. So, was our shrimp the in the family Aristidae, these ones? Could have been in the family Aristeus. I think it was this one. And there's something again on the sea floor. What is it? Maybe a sea cucumber? Large sea cucumber or larger. Yeah. Okay. That is another quite large cyanolacted sea so cucumber. There, yeah. Wow, so many protrusions. Yeah, and also there's a difference in color, which makes it the, the contrast. That's great. Thank you so much for the zoom. Moving on. Is that a group of sea cucumbers the same one that the sea pigs are part of? If you sea know pigs, sea yeah, pigs, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think sea pigs are... Let me check. Yes. Yes. Looks like another dead coral. Yeah, that's sponge probably. There's another small shrimp. Sponge, that's right. Glass sponge. Glass sponge, yes. I always get confused between which ones are called the sea hares and which ones are called uh. the sea pigs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the sea hares are uh, gastropods. Mm, yeah. Sea pigs have that like pink, mm. kind of pinkish color, right? Looks like another sea cucumber probably on the seafloor or no, it's just a dark patch. 